everyone. In this video lecture, let us understand module 3, Gate Level Modeling. In this lecture, let us understand the AND OR gates in Verilog. We have seen the various levels of abstraction in Verilog like the gate level modeling, the behavioral modeling, the data flow modeling and the switch level modeling. In this module, we are going to understand the gate level modeling and how to write a Verilog code in this level of abstraction. So gate level modeling as the name itself suggests, in this modeling style, we are going to describe the circuit in terms of the logic gates like the AND, NAND and NOT gate etc. So coding in this level is very simple for a beginner in Verilog coding because he just needs to have a knowledge about the digital logic design because there is a one to one correspondence between the logic circuit diagram and the program he writes in Verilog. So first let us understand by seeing the different gate types in Verilog. So a logic circuit we know that can be designed using any one of the logic gates. In Verilog, we have logic gates defined as primitives, the gate primitives which are predefined codes written for every logic gate. So we can just instantiate those primitives or call those primitives which are predefined and we can just instantiate them in the main code without writing a module definition about the AND gate, OR gate and those gates. So there are two classes of basic gates in Verilog. The first class is known as the AND OR gates and the second class is known as the BUFF NOT gates. That's the buffer and the NOT gates. So first let us understand about the AND OR gates class of gates in Verilog. So first let us understand about the AND OR gates in Verilog. So the AND OR gates can have one scalar output that is one bit output but they can have multiple scalar inputs. So the first terminal in the list of the gate terminal. So when we instantiate the gate primitive in the code, the first terminal must always be the output and the rest of the terminals, the other terminals are the input terminals. We will understand this with an example. So the AND OR gates available in Verilog are, we have the AND gate, then the NAND gate, OR gate, NOR gate, XOR gate and the XNOR gate. So these are the different AND OR gates available in Verilog which can be instantiated or called using the same names. Let us see the symbols for these gates. So these represents the symbols of a two input AND gate just for the purpose of illustration. So we can have multiple inputs. So this represents the symbol of a two input AND gate. This is the symbol of a two input NAND gate with a bubble at the output of the AND gate. This represents a two input OR gate. This is a two input NOR gate. Then this is the symbol of a two input XOR gate. And then this is the symbol of a two input XNOR gate. So these are the symbols of the AND OR gates available in Verilog. Now let us see how do we have to instantiate these gate primitives while writing the program. So we all know that the AND OR gates have one scalar output and multiple inputs. So let us assume we are considering an AND gate. So wire, we have declared them as wire out in 1 and in 2, the input 1 and input 2. So the rule for writing the instantiation is we have to write the gate primitive which is the name of the gate give an instance name. Instance name is just the number of times it is occurring. So this is optional for gate instantiations but we can include that instance name and the first list in the terminal list the first one has to be an output because we have only a single output. The rest of the terminals can be an input. Let us understand this in case. So if we are, if we are interested to instantiate the NAND gate we have to write the name of the gate NAND that is the gate primitive give a name to this. So I have just used n1 as the instance name and then in this list the output variable comes first followed by the set of input variables. So we are assuming a two input NAND gate. Similarly if we are instantiating the AND gate we have to write the gate primitive, write an instance name, write the output terminal list, output terminal first and then the input terminals next. Similarly, NOR gate, I've used N1. We can change the instance name also because we have the same instance name here. Out in one comma into the output variable first and then the inputs. XOR, X1, 
out in one comma into this is just a sample showing you how instantiations happen so we have the xnor instantiation xn1 out in one comma into we said that it can have one scalar output but multiple scalar inputs for illustration we have just taken two inputs here we can have a gate with multiple inputs say a five input or gate so if it's a five input or gate we can observe here the first terminal is always the output terminal the rest can be the input terminals so this is the way in which we have to instantiate the gates while we are writing a gate level modeling in Verilog write the name of the gate and first write the output variable of that gate followed by the input variables so this is an example for this gate we have written these instantiations now let us observe the truth tables of each of the and or gates individually so first let us begin by looking into the truth table of the and gate so we know the four value set in Verilog is 0, 1, x and z. So we are going to see the AND operation of each of these values with the same set 0, 1, x and z. Now we know the property of the AND gate that if any one input in the AND gate is a 0, the output will be a 0 irrespective of the other inputs in the list. So accordingly since this input is 0, this column in the truth table will continue to be 0 irrespective of the other inputs because the AND gate gives us a 0 output when any one input is 0. On the similar lines, in this particular row, the first row, the input is 0. So irrespective of these inputs 1, x and z, this row also turns out to be 0 because AND gate gives a 0 output when it is having one of the input as a 0. Now let us do the rest of the table individually. 1 and 1. We know for AND gate if both the inputs are 1, the output is a 1. X that is unknown with a 1. Unknown can be either a 0 or a 1. If unknown is a 0, then we will get the result as 0. If unknown is 1, 1 and 1, we are going to get the result as 1. So the result is again unpredictable. It is following the value of this unknown. So 1 unknown X, 1 AND with unknown is an unknown value. Similarly, one ANDed with high impedance state always gives a unknown value because high impedance state is again unknown state. Next, when we take the unknown value here, unknown with X gives us an unknown value, unknown with unknown gives an unknown value, unknown with Z gives an unknown value. Similarly, for Z, because the value itself is unknown, all the rest of the values will be unknown. So this is the truth table of a AND gate. Now let us see the truth table of an OR gate. According to the property of OR gate, we know that OR gate gives us a high output when any one bit is high. So if we observe in the truth table, we observe a 1 here. So obviously this entire column output will be 1 irrespective of the other inputs. Similarly, we have a 1 here. So the entire row output will be a 1 because we know that in an OR gate, if any one input is high, the output will be high. So we have all ones in this particular row and column. Now let us do the rest of the table. So 0 or 0 is a 0. 0 or x. So x can be either a 0 or a 1. Accordingly, this output changes. So this is going to be unknown. 0 with z is again an unknown value because z is treated as unknown for evaluation. 0 with unknown is again an unknown. Unknown with unknown obviously is an unknown. Z with Z or with X is an unknown. So since we have Z here, the rest of the cases in the table will be unknown. So this is the truth table of the OR gate. Now let us look into the truth table of the NAND gate. We know that NAND is the complement of AND gate. So this table would look exactly complementary of a AND gate. Now in an AND gate, when one of the input is 0, we know that the output is 0. Whereas in a NAND gate, if one of the input is 0, the output turns out to be 1. So this column, since one of the input is a 0, all the outputs will be a 1 irrespective of the other inputs. Similarly, in this row, since one of the input is 0, we know that in a NAND gate, if one of the input is 0, the output is a logic 1. So we get all 1s in this particular row of the truth table. Now let us solve the others. 
1 nanded with 1. So we know it's complementary of and. So we have to get a 0 here. 1 and nanded with x. So unknown. We are going to get an unknown. And whenever we have this high impedance state, obviously we are going to get an unknown value. Now unknown with any of these other values will give us definitely unknown conditions itself. And z with any of these rest of the values will also give us an unknown condition. So this is the truth table of the NAND gate. Now let us see the truth table of the NOR gate. We know that NOR is complement of OR. In an OR gate when any one input was high we were having the output as logic 1. But in an OR gate if any one input is 1 the output is turns out to be 0. So this column in the truth table will give us a 0. Similarly in this row where we have a logic 1 that also turns out to be a 0. The rest can be solved and filled. So 0 nor with 0 we know the output is logic 1 that is the complement of OR. When we have 0 with unknown condition obviously it is going to be unknown. Z with any of these conditions will be unknown. Unknown with the rest of the conditions will be unknown and Z high impedance state with the rest of the conditions is also going to be unknown. So this represents the truth table of the NOR gate. Now let us see the truth table of an XOR gate. We know that the XOR gate gives us a high output when it has different inputs and a low output when it has similar inputs. So 0 XOR 0 is a 0 because we have similar inputs. 0 XOR 1 or 1 XOR 0 here gives us a 1. Then 0 XOR 1 gives us a 1 and 1 XOR 1 gives us a 0. So only these four cases are known values because to tell the output of an XOR gate both the inputs must be defined. For the rest of the cases where we have x and high impedance the result will be unknown because without knowing the bit value it is difficult to say the XOR output. So all other cases remain unknown. Next let us see the truth table of an XOR XNOR gate which is the complement of the XOR gate. So here the output will be high if both the inputs are similar and output will be low if both the inputs are different. So in those lines 0 x nor 0 we get a 1, 1 x nor 0 is a 0 and 0 x nor 1 is again a 0, 1 x nor 1 is a 1. So we can observe that these four cases are the complementary of the above cases for the XOR gate. For the rest of the cases where we have the unknown and the high impedance state we can observe that all the results will be unknown for x nor gate also. So this represents the truth table of XOR and XNOR gate in Verilog. So in this lecture we have understood the AND OR gates, their symbols, the instantiations and the truth tables of these gates. Thank you.